This car has keyless start, so you press the button. It sounds a bit like a computer game when it switches on, but I actually quite like it. And a nifty feature that this car has is when you put it into reverse gear, as you can see, a camera has now appeared on the sat-nav screen. So we can start going backwards. If I turn the wheel slightly to the left, it will show me where I will end up if I carry on going back at that angle. And then I can turn it the other way. So if somebody is not a confident parker, I think this will give them great assistance. With me in the car, we have Roger Neild, who is a neighbourhood inspector from Surrey Police. I like the quiet. Good. Too, yes, you know, I've heard of, um, I've heard of electric vehicles being invited to, uh, to make more of a noise uh, because they're so quiet on the road. And uh, you can see how that would work, but mm. this is... On the dash, there's the normal things that you would expect to find, such as speedo and instead of engine temperature or coolant temperature rather, on this you will find battery temperature and it will also show you how many miles you've covered, how many miles you've got left in the tank, uh, but quite a, a nice little feature which you don't get on any other sort of car is up here you start to grow a tree and then if you drive very environmentally friendly the tree turns into an orchard so the, the, the greener you drive the more you are rewarded. I used to have a job where I could where I drive all sorts of different vehicles and uh, I have to say that I, I do I do miss that. Yes. Um, I think I'm convinced already. So aside from it being an electric vehicle it's rather much the same as a normal car. So in a normal car I would expect to find traction control, ABS, airbags, it's got six airbags including front, passenger, curtain and side airbags, it's got 16 inch alloy wheels, it's got keyless entry, keyless start, um, sat nav, climate control, cruise control, the difference is it's completely silent. In actual fact as we're running this we've got the engine running and uh, you can't hear a thing at all. I'm sure many people will say to police officers, it was so quiet and comfortable, I didn't realise I was doing that speed officer. <laughs> <laughs> and for once, I suspect <laughs> that they may have a point. <laughs> Less. Normal home charging takes around 12 hours. However, on a DC fast charge, it takes 30 minutes to charge up to 80% of the battery capacity. Do you notice that uh, you're actually creating a little orchard there? You're growing some trees. No, I hadn't spotted that. Ah, well in the top left yes, of the yeah, dash there, that. Uh, the more economical that you drive, the... Uh, the bigger the trees. The more trees that will grow. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Wow. It's rewarding you. I look, I look to have a Douglas fir there. The, <laughs> the best option for a home charge system is to get a company such as British Gas to install a specialist system which will reduce the charge time by four hours. So what did you think of your drive? I really enjoyed it. I've, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I came to it with a completely open mind but uh, I've, we've, we've travelled around town, we've done a little bit of uh, open road uh, and although we've not been on the motorway, um, you know, this, this vehicle has, uh, has done everything well. Being an electric vehicle, there is no gearbox, which means there's one less thing to go wrong and obviously reduces your maintenance bill. So what you have on the Nissan Leaf is a palm selector, which is a very ergonomically designed button and you can put it into reverse gear, you can put it into drive and you can leave it in neutral and the handbrake is just pressing the P button so it's very very easy to use.
Did it feel like an electric vehicle or did it feel like a normal car? Well, <clears throat> mostly like a normal car. There are one or two uh, uh, little things that, that make you realise that it's not quite the same as, uh, uh, as a big petrol engine car. And that would be um, its quietness. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever speed, it's quieter. Um, when going round, and also I'm not, I don't normally drive an automatic, yes. but uh, being an electric engine car, there's no, uh, there's no gears to go through. The sat-nav so, system is very easy to use. You just press the menu button and the touch screen, you can select destination. And as you can see, there's the normal points of interest and address input here and an important feature with this vehicle is charging station so you can actually click that and find out where your nearest charging station is to you and what did you think of the brakes uh, absolutely no problem i'm i'm very comfortable yeah. uh, i was very comfortable and, it, and unlike if you were on a uh, an old-fashioned electric car you'd you, you'd you'd probably find some difference, but uh, this is like driving an ordinary yes. uh, an ordinary car. Yes, very good. And in terms of storage and boot space, what sort of equipment would you need to carry around and would there be enough room for it? Well, I think um, we, we were looking at that uh, before we set off and, I, uh, and for most neighborhood policing purposes there's more than enough space mm -hmm. the fact that you could we you know we do transport people from um our main operating base in Adelston to uh the, the Egan police post where they pick up the bicycles mm -hmm. or, or walk from the uh, from the from the place um the fact that you could get uh, four fully equipped officers in the vehicle um is a real bonus. Excellent. And in terms of other government bodies, do you think there's some way of bringing the uh, community together so that you could perhaps share charging points or something? Yes, we um, Surrey Police have already uh, got their neighbourhood teams co-located with uh, uh, in uh, council offices, and I can certainly see that, uh, that where the council have a need for moving staff from A to B. Uh, as we do, as having um, charging points um, set up and a, a number of vehicles that we could uh, quite easily um, find ourselves working with our partners, uh, not just as in partnership but collaboratively in order to, uh, to uh, uh, undertake our day-to-day -day, uh, business. This looks like a system that would work for, for a number of services. Electric vehicles can be one of the most fuel efficient ways of travelling. Now, that's even being powered by the national grid. What British Gas have done, however, is install canopies with solar panels on top and they keep their vehicles on charge all the time that they're not being used. And after about eight years, you've covered the cost of the canopy and all the electricity produced after that. Not only is it kind on the environment, but it's also completely free of charge. Now, obviously, there's different ways that you can charge the vehicle. You can leave it on charge overnight. Uh, what British Gas have got set up here is actually sonar panels on a canopy mm. so that you can leave it on charge all the time the vehicle's not being used. And it would be a much cheaper way of charging the vehicle. Would you like to see how it works and perhaps have a go at unplugging and plugging it in? Yes, of course I would. Okay. It's amazing, really, because um, I thought that we'd lose, you'd lose a load of load space for, in order to have your, 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 your battery units, but clearly with them lining the floor, you still keep your, your load space. And the next thing is, how well could this fit the, uh, the, the neighbourhood policing model for moving staff from A to B at, at low cost and... Um, enable them to to get round their areas in such a way as that we, we keep our green credentials. I, I'm I'm really impressed with the the shape and size of the vehicle.